So Donald Trump addressed uh, his citizens yesterday on the coronavirus. I don't know why I said that so weird. <laughs> he addressed all of us on the coronavirus. Anyway, um, he's taken a lot of flack for this, honestly. Um, there, there was aspects of it where people are calling it the Trump virus, and they're attacking certain policies he's had and certain things he said and uh, certain things he's done. I don't completely fall into that, and it hurts me to say that because I'm not a Trump supporter, and I think most of what he has done is incredibly wrong and in the wrong direction for our country. But sometimes I feel like the media just goes after him without ever saying any of the good things he'd done. I kind of, while watching this, I put myself in mind of what if this was Obama saying this? And how would it play out? And ultimately, I said, yeah, the, the media would have said something was was off with Obama. He didn't seem right. Namely, we'll go over the pros and cons of what Trump's plan are and what, how he verbalized his idea and plan. So starting off, the cons, the big cons, the first one being Mike Pence. He put Mike Pence in charge of this. Mike Pence, if y'all don't know, is responsible for the biggest break, um, AIDS epidemic breakout in Illinois uh, when he refused to supply them with clean needles. Now, I'm sure that had to do something with his religious beliefs or his conservative ideology, something like that. But it still went from an AIDS breakout of like 30 people to like and it, it like doubled in size within a week or two after they were asking him to supply clean needles because people were abusing an opioid. Uh, Mike Pence does not believe in evolution. <laughs> That's a problem if you're working with scientists. That's all I'm saying. I don't know if you've ever been in a, a group project before, like in school, and the super religious person is never helpful because they don't believe in science. Um... The other thing about Mike Pence is um, he has said before on record that he doesn't think, well, he's not sure if cigarettes cause cancer. So this is obviously a guy who will look at medical facts and say, yeah, I don't know. Let me talk to God on it. Yeah, I don't want that guy in charge of me not getting the coronavirus. Um, and we can definitely criticize Trump's diluting of funds for the CDC and for emergency situations such as this because he has and his budget plans even the the newest one show massive cuts for the CDC and show massive cuts for um, emergency uh, situations and that's a definite problem now Trump did address that and he said well look we can always just hire these people back, but that's not really how it works. <laughs> Most of those funds go to more structural things, not just people. And yes, people is a part of it, but not nearly as much as the resources. The resources matter so much more. And since there's no funding for that, they're going to have to take away or not build or not expand or not research on certain things that are probably going to be pretty instrumental in helping us through this coronavirus thing. Um, and those are big, big things. Now, the other aspect of the way that Trump addressed the coronavirus, I thought in some manner he was doing it to, to talk to the, the common man. And yes, they all feel like they have to. And I really feel that's disturbing. <laughs> you don't need to pander to us, but he kind of did when he was talking about the flu and we're going to say this is a pro or a con. I'm not sure where to put it, but when he was talking about the flu, he said, I didn't even know 60,000 people in America die of the flu every year. And he was taking a lot of shit for that. Like, he should know that. A doctors know that. Well, he's Donald Trump. He's not a fucking doctor. I mean, let's be honest. Yes, we knew that. And a lot of us have been paying attention to that. But he just got back from the Middle East, where he's been talking about a lot of other stuff. I mean, it, I, I'm not trying to defend him on this one, but I am in a way, saying, like, that's eh, not really fair. Not to mention the way that he said that made me believe that he was just kind of saying, look, 
this is a huge number of people that died from the flu. The coronavirus is kind of like the flu. Now, there again, we have a lot of officials coming back and saying, um, no, it's not like the flu. It's it's far more aggressive. It's 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 more it's far more dangerous. And in fact, Sanjay Gupta had questioned him on his parallel to the flu, and he basically had said, like, look, and this is Sanjay Gupta he said to Trump, the flu has, uh, I think it was a point seven percent mortality rate as where the coronavirus has like a 2.6 2.7 mortality rate and trump got in a back and forth with him and it's kind of funny because this was so trumpian trump argued that the mortality rate on the flu was wrong but when you actually look at the numbers uh sanjay gupta's mortality rate of the coronavirus being at 2.8 2.7 whatever that was wrong because in actuality, the coronavirus's mortality rate is going down drastically, and it is regional. I know that it's pretty early to be talking about that, but it is a fair point to, to say that in China, when they weren't expecting it, yeah, the mortality rate was going to be higher. They didn't have the supplies. They didn't know what was happening. The mortality rate would definitely spike at that point. And as far as we know at the moment, it's going down. But every case that's happened in America, um, in the Netherlands, in really in, in countries where they have good communication and are prepared to deal with things like that, the mortality rate of the coronavirus is like, I believe that's the 7%. I think I said, or 0.7%. I, I said that about the flu, and it, the flu is 0.3%. I apologize. But yeah. It, the coronavirus is actually about a 0.7%, which sucks. I mean, that's still a lot of people. Like, if we put that on the same ranks as the flu, that would, and, and as far as people getting infected by it, that would still be like 160,000 people would get, would possibly die from the coronavirus. That's, yeah, that's not great. I'm not saying that, but that number of 2 to 3% is not fair. And I, I, I think that's part of it. The other thing that the CDC did say is that 40 to 70 percent of all the world's people will feel the effects of the coronavirus. And I think Trump was kind of playing it down. And I don't exactly hate his stance on this because where the coronavirus is really serious Instead of jumping to the clickbaity thing, that is, you're going to get it and you're going to die, Trump kind of said, like, look, take care of yourself. Wash your hands. Make sure you're, you're clean. Follow uh, Something that Bo of the Fifth Column said, you know, do what your mom would tell you to do. <laughs> you know, plenty of fluids. Take care of yourself. Aspirin if you need it. Make sure you're clean. Make sure you're cleaning things like your cell phone and, and your TV remote and things that people touch a lot, door handles, whatever. But don't worry. And I think that that is pretty important for a president to do, to not stoke fear. And let's go back to what the CDC said. 40 to 70 percent of the globe will feel its effects. Well, I own a vapor shop, right? Well, all of the and this might be going too technical for people, but the coils, the things that kind of that, that heat up. I can't order any. We are completely out. Every distributor I talk to is completely wiped out. So I'm feeling the effects of it. I'm not sick. No one I know is sick, but I'm feeling the effects of it. So all of my 4,000 customers who come in, you know, in the next couple of days, they're going to feel the effects of it. And I, I think that that's kind of where this, the, the CDC and, and um, a lot of mainstream media maybe – is taken. I'm not saying I'm not blaming the CDC on this, uh, but the mainstream media has taken that mantle and ran with it a little bit to try to get more fear and more confusion about it than they should. And again, it's not something that I'm trying to downplay myself, and, and that's why I, I sympathize with Trump because I don't believe that he was just saying, "No, nah, don't worry about it. it's going away. It'd be fine." Now he did say some stupid stuff. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> he said, um, "I think he's uh, what was it? He said in April." When the weather warms up, it'll be gone. That's completely moronic, okay? 
But just the fact that he wasn't trying to scare people, I, I, I feel like even if it was for nefarious reasons, meaning the stock market, I still think there's something admirable about a president trying to be calm in a situation like this. Now, ultimately, how did Trump handle this? Not great. I mean, he gets like a C minus, in my opinion. Not the F that everyone's giving him and, you know, obviously not the A plus that Fox News is giving him. But I do think it's fair that when we're talking about Trump, we look at it objectively, especially as a Bernie supporter. I understand more now than ever with the media and what your political power parties, both sides, are doing to try to destroy people they don't like. And I say that from a progressive aspect, that when we do read about Trump, be objective. I mean, that objectivity has kind of helped us along, like with things like Russiagate, Russiagate 2.0, which was great. I want to put up a story about that, except it's really small. Essentially, how I said it was all bullshit, yeah, the, the intelligence community came out and said, yeah, it was kind of bullshit too. No one's really talking about it, but that's a huge thing. So, all in all, Trump's address to the, the country on the coronavirus was not great. <laughs> it was subpar, but not as bad as everyone's saying. And I do think that there is some, some truth to what he's saying. And yes, this is something to be prepared for. This is something we should be wary of, but not worried about. We don't need to go around imagining what it's like going to be trapped in our house for two weeks. Now, will I tell you that you should probably stock up on some canned goods and water and things like that? Yes, you should. You should. Um, I, I wouldn't worry about buying the, the damn N95 masks. You're not going to find them. They're goddamn expensive if you do find them. And most of them that I've seen won't ship for like a month. But just be planning to, if if there's an outbreak, to take care of yourself, to do the things that you should do. Plenty of fluids. Don't freak out and run to the doctors. Wait until you can't take care of it anymore. Until your fever starts spiking and it will not go down. Or after a few days of aspirin, your fever has not gone down. And it keeps spiking if you're not on aspirin. Things like that. That we kind of know when we've learned. Just, um... I don't think it's going to be as bad as everyone says. And I don't... I, I think the media is doing a giant disservice by making people panic uh, just so they'll have more clicks. I mean, we know that's what they do. Now, granted, that is a double-edged sword because there's going to be a time when they're not stoking fear, and it's real. And I think that's what everyone's big fear with the coronavirus is, is that, no, no, this is, this is that time. I don't think it is. I really don't. But I will say just be precautious about it. You know, use your your judgment when when dealing with certain situations understand that there's a lot of you know trump even brought it up there is a plan to quarantine cities if need be now that sounds terrifying to me and it is it's completely terrifying. if it gets to that point you can get on this facebook channel and chew me out and say i'm a piece of garbage and everything else that a lot of people already do say but until that point just be prepared have enough food for a month or so. And I always say that. You should always have food and water for like a month. Um, ways, you know, to to take care of yourself. I'm not saying become a complete hoarder or uh, a prepper. Sorry. Uh, but you should have those things on hand anyway. So at best, you're just preparing yourself. And um, the other thing too, I will say, as a consumer... Be wary of price gouging. We are probably going to see a lot of that. I've even seen that, like I said, is a in the vape industry. There are certain shops in my area that are charging double for certain things. Now, I can give you this bit of insight as far as vaping goes, and I think it does kind of correlate to what I'm saying and to what is happening around the world. But in Shenzhen, which is where they make a lot of vaping products, I've talked to my distributors. And they've all said that they've all already gone back to work and that in about two weeks, we should be fully stocked again with stuff. So that tells me that this is dying down and that, yeah, it's had a big hype and for good reason. I mean, globally, a lot of people died and that's really tragic and really sad. 
but that we have figured out ways to prevent it, figured out ways to stifle it down. We've got an, a, a vaccine that's supposedly supposed to be on its way in the near future. But my point is, if China is going back to work, that's a good sign for the rest of us. Anyway, I'm curious your thoughts on it. I'm not married to my opinion on the coronavirus, by the way. I am very torn back and forth. Um, but I'm really curious about people's opinions on this, your thoughts on it. I've had a couple listeners send me articles uh, showing where they're going through in China. They're just spraying workplaces and homes and places like and things like that. And it, it seems incredibly dramatic. <laughs> like... So I'm I'm not yeah I'm not gonna don't listen to me essentially on this listen to me on my whole critique of Trump but as far as the coronavirus going forward um, yeah but but I am really curious what y'all think anyway you guys have a good evening take care.